What's up guys, Saf here on Super Saf TV and we finally got the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G in the house. That's definitely a mouthful, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. But of course, we're doing things Super Saf style, so not only do we have the S21 Ultra 5G, we've also got the Galaxy Buds Pro as well as the brand new Samsung Galaxy Smart Tag. So a thumbs up for that would be appreciated. We're gonna get all of these unboxed and do a detailed walkthrough. Let's get to it. So we do have to start with the top of the top, the flagship, the big boy, I can't think of any other names, the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G. And the first thing you'll notice is that the box is much slimmer compared to what we've had in previous years. And that is of course because we no longer get a charger or earphones included out of the box. Very controversial, I know. We'll talk about that a little bit later. The box design has also changed. We've got uh, the S in the middle with the 21 in the background. I quite like that. And the S is color coordinated. So this is black because we've got the Phantom black version. If you do get a different color, then this S will be different. Now it's time for the unboxing. So I'll stay quiet for a bit. That was nice, wasn't it? Definitely let me know what you thought of the new unboxing style. And as you saw, all we get is a SIM card tool, a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable, as well as a quick start guide on the device. That is it. Now, Samsung is no longer including a charger and earphones out of the box. This is for environmental reasons, but they did make fun of Apple a few months ago when Apple decided not to do the same. So yeah, I mean, I have done a rant about this in a separate video on my podcast channel, Super Saf Speaks. I'll link that video in the cards and down in the description. Let's get to the device. The first thing I wanna take a look at is the design. And this is the Phantom Black. And man, I gotta say, this looks so, so slick. We've got a matte finish. Now there is also a Phantom Silver, which, uh, I almost went for just because I thought it would make it easier to film. What an idiot! Oh, what a loser! But I'm so, so glad I went with the Phantom Black. As you can see, it really does go with my whole theme. And man, it does look so, so good. There are actually three other colors available too. There's a brown, a navy, and a titanium. And they actually have a carbon fiber finish for the camera module but those are made to order and they take around five weeks, I think four or five weeks, and they are only available from the Samsung website if you're interested in those, but obviously I wanted to get this as soon as possible. So we've got IP68 water and dust resistance. We've got Gorilla Glass Victus, the latest version of Gorilla Glass. And then we've got this aluminum frame, which actually blends in to the contour cut camera module. I'm definitely digging this design. I know it's a thing of personal preference and there's been some mixed opinions. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this design. Right, now let's move over on to the front. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the fingerprint scanner. So we actually have Qualcomm's Gen 2 3D Sonic sensor, which is around 77% larger compared to the previous generation. And it's also 50% faster. And first impressions, yeah very, very fast. The display has also been massively improved. We have a 6.8 inch display with small bezels and an infinity O punch outs. And this is the only S21 that has a quad HD resolution. The others have full HD resolution, but what's unique this year is that we've got quad HD resolution with 120 Hertz. In previous years, if you did want 120 Hertz, you would have to switch down to full HD. So you can have maximum sharpness with maximum smoothness. I quite like that. That should be the tagline for Samsung. I'm gonna copyright it. What's even more impressive is that the refresh rate is adaptive and it can go all the way down to just 10 Hertz. So if you are watching some static content, 
there is really no need to be taking up all that battery life by being at 120 hertz. So it's gonna automatically switch. And if you are scrolling through like this, then it's gonna be at 120 hertz. The display is also 25% brighter compared to last year. So it's 1500 nits, which I believe makes it one of the, if not the brightest smartphone display in the market. And it also has 50% more contrast. I mean, I think already this is gonna be a big contender for the best display on a smartphone. Samsung obviously are ahead of the game when it comes to displays. And this definitely shows here on the S21 Ultra. Now we do have slight curves on either side, but they are not as much as a lot of other devices. The S21 and the S21 Plus do have more flat displays. Now let's talk a little bit about the cameras. So in the front punch out, we do have a 40 megapixel selfie camera. Generally, you will be shooting at around 10 megapixels to get the most out of the sensor. But let's talk about the most important cameras and these are here at the back. So I basically asked Samsung, how many cameras does the S21 Ultra have? And they replied with, yes. No, but really we've got four rear facing cameras as well as a laser autofocus sensor. Let's break these down. We do of course have an ultra wide camera, a primary camera, but we have two telephoto cameras starting with the ultra wide camera. Now this has actually been improved compared to last year. It's 12 megapixels and it has dual pixel autofocus for the first time. And what this will allow you to do is refocus depending on how far you are away from the subject. So not only will you be able to get ultra wide shots, you'll also be able to get up close and personal for 12 megapixel high resolution macro shots. I am so excited to test this out. The 108 megapixel sensor is also updated compared to what we had last year. So although it is the same size, we do have three times more dynamic range with 12 bit raw capture. And the laser autofocus sensor is really gonna help with focus. You may remember the S20 Ultra did not have the best focus. That larger sensor size meant it didn't have dual pixel autofocus. With the laser autofocus sensor, this should be resolved. It's something that I have definitely tested thoroughly on my Note 20 Ultra, and it's been very, very good. And then we have two zoom cameras. There is a three times optical zoom camera, as well as a 10 times periscope zoom camera. Now I really like this because it gives you a lot more flexibility. You don't always have to be at an extreme. You don't wanna always use the 10X, so the 3X is really nice for that. But the S21 Ultra can zoom in all the way up to 100 times. Now, you guys know how I feel about 100 times zoom. The one new feature that they do have is zoom lock. So one of the things you would normally find on some of these zoom cameras is when you have zoomed in quite a bit, it is shaking like anything because all of those micro shakes on your hand are magnified by 100 times. Now with this zoom lock feature, it will make the extreme zoom lens a lot more usable. But generally speaking, I will be sticking to around 30X max. We of course will be doing a super SAS style detailed camera comparison of the S21 Ultra very, very soon. If you want to see that first, you guys know what to do. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss it. And also let me know which camera you'd like me to compare it to first. We also have lots of improvements for video. So as we had last year, we do have 8K at up to 24 frames a second. Not 30 frames a second, but I mean, 24 frames a second is the frame rate that you should be shooting at anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And for the first time on a Galaxy device, we do have 4K 60 frames a second across all of the cameras. So front facing, all of the four rear facing, you will be able to shoot at 4K 60 frames a second. This was not the case in previous years, and it's something that I talked about many times in my camera comparisons. And although I'm not somebody who uses 4K 60 frames a second all the time, it is great to have that consistency. And we've also got lots of new video software features, Single Take 2.0, which is gonna record from multiple cameras and then give you some automatically edited clips. But what I'm more interested in is Directive view, which allows you to preview the other cameras in thumbnails before you switch to them. And that should be really, really useful. Once again, we'll be doing some thorough testing of all the cameras for both photos and video super SAS style. So do stay tuned for that. Let's take a look around the smartphone. So on the left hand side, we have nothing. On the top, we just have two mics. On the right hand side, we have a power button as well as a volume rocker. At the bottom, we have a USB type C port 
We've got one of the two speakers, so one is bottom firing and one is in the earpiece, so we do have stereo speakers. And finally, we have a SIM card tray. Now, one of the new things that you'll see in this SIM card tray is that there is no longer space for a micro SD card. This is the first time a Samsung Galaxy S device has not had a micro SD card for expansion. Let me know what you guys think. Personally speaking, considering the speed of the storage on here, which is UFS 3.1, uh, I do think that it's not the biggest deal not to have the micro SD card. Uh, I've talked a little bit more about this once again on my podcast, shameless plug. I will link that video in the cards and in the description. The S21 Ultra does come with a base of 128 gigabytes with 12 gigabytes of RAM. And you can also get it with 256 gigabytes of storage just for 50 pounds more. So. That is not too much for the storage, so you know it might make up somewhat for the lack of the micro SD card slot. And you can go all the way up to 512 gigabytes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, which should be amazing for multitasking. Now the S21 Ultra is powered by either the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 5G or Samsung's Exynos 2100. Now, which one of these you get, as always, will depend on your region. Here in the UK, I do have the Exynos 2100. Now, Samsung have said that we've got lots of improvements compared to last year. So up to 20% faster CPU performance, up to 35% faster GPU performance, and up to twice as fast AI. Now, I'm obviously gonna have to get my hands on the 888 version. And as I do every year, I am gonna be doing a longer term review of the S21 Ultra after using both versions. And I'll definitely let you know my thoughts. In previous years, as you guys may know, the Qualcomm version has excelled compared to the Exynos version, but Samsung has brought a lot of improvements to the Exynos version. They've used the tagline, Exynos is back. So they're very confident about it. We'll, we'll definitely do lots of tests and find out. For software, we do have Android 11, the latest with Samsung's One UI 3. And the S21 Ultra is the world's first smartphone with hyper fast Wi-Fi 6E, which will give you up to four times faster Wi-Fi speeds. It also has ultra wideband technology, which will open up lots more possibilities. Samsung have been talking about using this as a touchless key for your car. And the Samsung Galaxy S21 is the first Galaxy S device with support for the S Pen. Now the S Pen is not included and I've not got it with me right now, but I do have the S Pen from my Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, which does work and it has been detected straight away. So I can go ahead and create a note, and, you know, just write my name. Boom. Okay, that was much easier than I expected. Now you will be able to buy an S Pen separately, which is larger. There's also an S Pen Plus that's gonna be coming out later in the year. And those come bundled with a case. So you have somewhere to put the S Pen. I've not got a hold of that yet. I'll let you know my thoughts when I do have it. And I guess one of the advantages that you have by not having the S Pen included and embedded within the S21 Ultra is the fact that you get a massive 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Now I'm obviously gonna have to put it through its paces, but I'm confident that it's gonna give you some great battery life, especially with the newer chipsets. And this device does support up to 25 watt wide charging. The charger of course is not included, but it also supports 15 watt wireless charging as well as wireless power share where you can use your S21 Ultra to charge other devices wirelessly. Now, one of the things that might make up for the lack of charger is the price that the S21 Ultra is coming in at. So it is starting at 1150 pounds in the UK or $1,200 in the US, which is significantly lower compared to what the S20 Ultra came in at last year. And if you pre-order now, this will be delivered towards the end of Jan. And there is also a pre-order offer, at least in the UK anyway, and that will give you free Galaxy Buds Pro as well as a Galaxy Smart Tag. We'll check out the Galaxy Buds Pro first. These are priced at $200 in the US, around £220 in the UK. So. I mean, I think that is a pretty good deal if you ask me. If you do pre-order, you'll get these included. Some of the key features here at the back, and I'm gonna go ahead and open this with my new knife, which some of you guys may recognize.
And here they are, so as well as the Galaxy Buds Pro, you do get a USB type A to USB type C cable, a quick start guide, as well as some ear tips. And we'll go ahead and set these up right away. So we're gonna pop these open. And as soon as we pop them open, that was very, very quick. We do get the connectivity screen. And done, let's go ahead and plug these in and have a quick test. All right, so in terms of my first impressions for the fit, it is really, really good. Like, that's one thing that I've always liked about Galaxy Buds. They actually do stay in your ears. Let's move around a little bit. Okay, I should have, that, that makes me super dizzy. I should never do that test. So let's go ahead and have a listen. Okay, so I'm no audiophile, but they do sound really good to me for my first impressions. Now, one of the key new things about the Galaxy Buds Pro is intelligent active noise cancellation. And Samsung say that this can block up to 99% of external sounds. Uh, I'm gonna have to test these out with the Galaxy Buds Live because they were quite open. You still did get a lot of the outside sound. So we'll test this out properly. But one of the things that I'm very excited about is a voice detect. So this feature actually uses the onboard mics as well as sensors for vibrations to notice when you are talking. And if you are talking and this feature is switched on, then you will be automatically switched to ambient sound rather than having to activate it yourself. You can activate it yourself by just touching and holding. So I'm gonna quickly test this out as well. So I'm gonna switch on voice detect. I'm gonna play some music and then we shall see. All right, so somebody's come over to me and I've started talking and yes, it did switch. I mean, it took about a second, but it did switch. Now the sound is ambient and I can fully hear myself speaking. You can actually see this demonstrated uh, quite well in the app. So you can see that active noise cancellation has been switched on. I'm gonna switch on voice detect and then I will stay quiet for a second and then I'll start talking and then you can see how long it actually takes to switch to ambient sound. So now I've started to talk and they, they saw it. I mean, it's not too bad. It's actually not too bad how quickly it does switch. The Galaxy Buds Pro also have windshield technology, which should help block wind. There's also a two millimeter vent inside to make these more comfortable over longer periods of listening. We do have IPX7 water and dust resistance, which is the highest rating on any Galaxy Buds device. And for battery life on their own, we're looking at five hours of listening time with the case up to 18 hours if you are using active noise cancellation. And if you are not using active noise cancellation, you can get all the way up to 28 hours, which is pretty impressive. You've also got auto switching between Galaxy devices. So if you are on your tablet and you get a phone call, then these will automatically switch from your tablet to your smartphone. We've got USB type C charging and a five minute charge will give you up to one hour of listening. These of course also support wireless charging so you can charge these on a regular Qi wireless charger or even on the back of your Samsung Galaxy S21 device. Now let's move on to the final product of this unboxing and it is the Samsung Galaxy Smart Tag. This is uh, I would say a tile competitor and it goes for around 30 pounds in the UK or $30 in the US. And if you were to buy a few of these then you do get a multi-pack discount and I mean here it is. It's pretty cool. We're just gonna try to set this up. So I've just pressed the button. And connection is super easy. We've already got it up here. We can add this now. Boom. It's uh, gonna be using Bluetooth low energy for location. And it's as easy as that. Now the idea behind the smart tag is pretty self-explanatory. If you want to put this on a bag, maybe you wanna put it on your keys, maybe you wanna put it on your pet, and you'll be able to easily track down your smart tag using your Galaxy device. I believe the range is within 120 meters. This uses Bluetooth low energy, so it will have very long battery life. There's also the Samsung Smart Tag Plus, which will be coming later on. And that actually uses ultra wideband technology. So it's gonna give you much more precise location information. And that is the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra the Samsung Galaxy Buds Pro, as well as the Samsung Galaxy Smart Tag, unboxing and first impressions. Of course, we're gonna be doing lots more detailed coverage of all of these here on the channel, super SaaS style. So if you wanna see all of that coverage first, you know what to do. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon. What do you guys think of the S21 Ultra, the Galaxy Buds Pro and the Smart Tag? Do let me know down in the comments below. Also let me know what coverage you'd like me to do with these devices. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then do hit that thumbs up button for me. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super Saf TV, and I'll see you next time.